Hello, sports fans and baseball fans, and especially White Sox fans. This is your White Sox weekly recap with me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And let's get into it. It was another week of games, one day off during the week, so there was only six games. Started the week on September 12th against Boston. And this was Nick Pavetta against Lance Lynn. And Chicago came into the game 81-61. and The White Sox scored a run in the bottom of the sixth and a walk-off home run by Lurie Garcia in the bottom of the ninth to win the game 2-1. to uh, Kimbrell got the win in relief and Garrett Whitlock took the loss for Boston in this one. Chicago goes to 82 and 61 with this win and 1 and 0 for the week. September 13th was the day off. There was no game. That brings us to the 14th of September and that was the Angels at the White Sox. Anaheim came to visit us. We played them way early in the year. I think it was maybe even the first series of the year that we had. Anyway, um, this was the pitching matchup was Naughton versus Giolito for us. And the White Sox come in 82 and 61 and 1 and 0 this week. And the White Sox won big in this game 9 3. For the Angels, Goslin was 1 for 4 with a homer and, uh, and a run and an RBI. Walsh was one for three with a homer and two RBIs. And Naughton got the loss. He only went two and two-thirds innings pitched, allowed six hits and four earned runs. For the White Sox, Grandall, who has been really hot since coming back from the IL. That guy's been on fire. He was one for five with an RBI. Robert was two for three with a homer, three runs, and an RBI. Sheets was 3 for 4 with 2 runs, a home run, and 4 RBIs. And Garcia was 2 for 4 with 2 runs and an RBI. Giolito went 4 and allowed 3 hits and 3 earned runs, but Bummer got the win in relief. He went 1 inning, uh, one clean inning, no earned runs. So with that win, the White Sox go to 83-61 and 61 and 2-0 and on the week. Off to a really spectacular start for the week. Then on the 15th, we played the Angels again, obviously. This was uh, junk for the Angels versus Keuchel, and he doesn't throw junk. He throws, he's got some uh, some heat. The White Sox came in at 83-61 and 61 and 2-0 and this week, and they lose in a close one, 3-2. For the Angels, Goslin was 1-2 one, one for two with an RBI, Marsh was three for four, two runs, a home run, and an RBI. That guy went off that game. And then Rangifo, our good friend Rangifo, was one for three with an RBI. I just like saying that name. Junk went four and a third innings pitched. He allowed three hits and one earned run. Myers, though, got the win in relief, one clean inning, and then Iglesias got his 32nd save of the year with one inning pitch, two hits, and uh, zero earned runs. For the White Sox, Moncada was 2 for 4 with a run, a home run, and an RBI. Grandall was 1 for 4 with an RBI. Keuchel pitched 6. He allowed 6 hits and 2 earned runs, which actually is not too bad. That's not a, that's not a bad performance, so maybe Keuchel is starting to turn the corner. I still don't think I would put him in the postseason uh, rotation, though, if there had to be an odd man out. Uh, Kopech got the loss. He went two innings pitched, allowed one hit and one earned run, and with that, the White Sox dropped to 83-62 and 62 and 2-1 two and one this week. That brings us to the 16th of September in the last game against the uh, Angels, and they put Alex Cobb up against Ronaldo Lopez. Now, Ronaldo Lopez has been quite hot lately. Um, since really since being brought up from the minor leagues. He's, um, in fact, he was horrible in the minor leagues, and they brought him up uh, due to need, and he's pitched great in the major leagues since he's been back. The White Sox came in at 83-62 and 62 and 2-1 two and one for the week, but they lost big 9-3. For the Angels, Walsh was 2-for-3 with two runs and an RBI. 
Rangifo was one for three with two runs, a home run, and two RBIs. Mayfield was one for four with a run and four RBIs, and Roja was two for four with a run, a home run, and two RBIs. Those, that Angel lineup just went off that game. For Chicago, not many offensive stars. Robert was two for five with an RBI, and Abreu was one for four with two RBIs. Uh, Cobb got the win for the Angels. He went five innings pitched, allowed two hits, and zero earned runs. Lopez actually got tagged in this game. He got he took the loss. He went four. He allowed seven hits and seven runs. Six of them were earned. So with the loss, the uh, White Sox fell to 83 and 63 and three and one this week. Um, or no, and three and two. Yeah. Yeah, three and they fell to three and two this week. So that uh, brings us to the um, uh, the September seventeenth game against the Rangers. This was the first game against the Rangers, and um, no, it was two and two. Yeah, that loss brought us to two and two, and so um, the. Uh, Coming into the first Ranger game, this was Cease versus Hearn. The White Sox came in 83 and 62. No, 83 and 63. They came in 83 and 63. I got my numbers all messed up here. The White Sox came in 83 and 63 and 2 and 2 for the week. And they rolled and won 8 0. For the White Sox, Robert was 3 for 5 with a run and 3 RBIs. Abreu was 2 for 3 with a run, 2 RBIs. Gonzalez was 3 for 4 with 2 runs and an RBI. And Cease got the win. He went 5 innings pitched, 4 hits, 0 earned runs, 10 Ks. So we got the Dr. Jekyll Cease, not the Mr. Hyde in this one. That improved his record on the year to 12 and 7. For the Rangers, Tavares was 2 for 5. Kiner Falefa was 2 for 5. Not many offensive stars in a zero-run game for them. Hearn got the loss. He went three and a third, allowed eight hits, seven earned runs. The White Sox improved on the year to 64 and, or 84 and 63 with that win. No, 84 and 62. God, all these numbers. I, I, I'm not even going to say the numbers anymore for the week or for the year. Just we're good. All right. So anyway, um, and then that brought us to the last Ranger game of the week, uh, which was September 18th, Saturday, September 18th. This was Lynn versus Howard. The White Sox came in 84 and 63 or whatever they came in, whoever knows. And the White Sox ended up losing this game 2-1. to one. Uh, the scoring was that in the bottom of the fourth, Jonah Heim of the Rangers reached on a fielder's choice, which allowed Andy Ibanez to score and made it one nothing Rangers. And um, then in the the top of the sixth, Grandall tied the game at one with a massive home run to center field, and it was 1-1. And then in the bottom of the sixth, the Rangers loaded the bases on a hit, a walk and error in the fourth and scored on a base hit to center field that could have been two, but Robert threw out the trailing runner at home and it was two to one Rangers and that's where it stood. So here we are um, after, the, uh, after this week and we are 13 games up, or no, with 13 games to play. There are 13 games left in the season and we're 11 up on Cleveland. And uh, in the coming week, we have one more against Texas, full schedule, full seven-day schedule. We have one more against Texas, then we have three against Detroit and three against Cleveland. With an 11-game lead and 13 to play, I don't think we have to worry about it at all. Um, I think we have, I do, I'm, I'm pretty sure we do have 84 wins, though. So, um, yeah, let's see if we can get to uh, 90. But that requires us to win six out of the last 13. You would think we could do that, but we'll see. Although the schedule does favor us being able to do that. Um, so let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, and I guess for right now, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke.
signing off.